right, we're back here on the show, and we're really excited. We have uh, Dr. Ibrahim Karim here, and uh, Pierre Paolo, uh, Dr. Karim, of course, the architect from Egypt. And scientist. And scientist. And founder of a brand new revolutionary science. Yeah, but just call me Ibrahim, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, author of the book. The book is called? Back to a Future for Mankind. Yeah. And it's available on Amazon and as well at the Total Health Show this upcoming weekend, where uh, Ibrahim will also be talking. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a booth in conjunction with the Toronto Dowsers. It's fabulous. It's fabulous that uh, you're here uh, today, Dr. Kareem. And also uh, Pierre Paolo, the architect. Uh, now, Pierre, I understand you uh, designed that house. That, that house. That <laughs> house <laughs> right here. That's and house. Yeah. this house is, uh, fa this is like, it's unbelievable what this is, but designed according to the, pr correct me if I'm up? wrong, but designed according to the principles of biogeometry. No, it's, the, it's the first house in North America that yeah. has been built like that from the ground up. Right. With the consultant consulting of Dr. Karim. That's how we met, that's how we started, and now oh. we're flying. Okay, now I understand and, uh, that just because of the design, the architecture, the, the geometry of the house, that it even does that's things like cleans the stream that flows absolutely. around the house? Oh, there are stories we can tell you about it. Well, okay, because I mean, that's enough. That, that was what, me. when I heard that, I thought, okay, we need to know more about this yes. biogeometry stuff <laughs> yeah. and Dr. Cream um, maybe you could give people a little bit of an introduction to this people that have maybe never heard of this before okay. well to start with just call me Abraham okay? I, I, yeah, I will okay now I mean if we look at, at our civilization for the past uh, let's say 200 years it's all about connecting with the electromagnetic radiation we want to bring it into every home, into every activity, right. because without it, we, we don't have the information age. Yeah. But that's only 200 years. If we go for, let's say, 10,000 years before that, it was not about distributing electromagnetic radiation. It was about distributing a balancing energy quality found in sacred power spots of the Earth. And from the first men here, the large stone that they put there on sacred power spots, to the city planning afterwards, mm -hmm. where they used to put their temples on sacred power spots, and then uh, the courthouse, and then the market, and then connect them with avenues. Mm -hmm. It was all about distributing this uh, balancing light into every activity of humanity. That mm -hmm. went for all the great civilizations. That was the main goal. I mean, that is the main criteria of architecture. Mm -hmm. And somehow, 200 years ago, s we went more into the material, and this thing just fell out. Like, did we forget about that? Did, was that science or that art of, of that b balancing design, was that something that was lost? And, and why wasn't it passed on? Well, it, it was part of every architecture of every great civilization. Somehow, our mindset went into the material and forgot uh, about let's say the subtle it's just like the same thing uh, 200 years ago at the same period we lost our connection to the subconscious see now how did that happen yeah i mean when freud first came and tried to open back the door of the subconscious you know it was an area that you feared you know, he, he'd open a small door and then there was this sexual uh, libido and all that and then open it again and look and there was this death thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, so w there was a fear of looking at the subconscious level. But if we don't get all the invisible dimensions back into play, we will not achieve uh, harmony because that is the only way we can harmonize and balance electromagnetic radiation. So we should know that we have a hidden time bomb in our civilization. This hidden time bomb is electromagnetic radiation. You use electromagnetic radiation, for example, in microwaves to mm -hmm. heat water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're not aware that they can uh, play a role in global warming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when they are there, mm -hmm. they move molecules. So they, they play a role in uh, global warming. So how will we wait till this hidden time bomb explodes one day we reach a threshold where all immunity systems of life will just collapse yeah. now if we bring this balancing light 
that was there for the past 10,000 years that every ancient civilization knew. If we bring this quality into our electromagnetic radiation, we transform that and we are distributing, uh, balancing, harmonizing energy like the ancients again, instead of destroying life on, on Earth. Okay. So th that's the main path of, that's the mission that we have uh, clothed in solutions to everyday problems. Okay, that's fantastic. Now, is it true you're living in Montreal yes, these I'm days? Yes, I'm living in Montreal, yes. Okay, and uh, I understand there may be some plans to uh, to kind of uh, use biogeometry to to fix Montreal well, from a I'm point of view. I'm planning to start that in July. There's, uh, I'm speaking at the conference there. Uh, the theme is the role of saints and sages in the spiritual evolution <coughs> of humanity. Mm. So my talk will be the role of sacred power spots in the evolution of humanity. And there I'm going to promote the idea of connecting with the power spots of the area and then uh, showing them how to energize them, how to connect them and how to bring their energy into all energies. Uh, that exists today uh, of modern technology and then we could actually change the whole psychology uh, and health of the people uh, of the area. So it's going to change the mindsets That's the of first the people thing that too. Happens. You know, there's one thing that people are not aware of, that the biggest negative effect of electromagnetic uh, radiation, before it affects your body function, the biggest effect is on your psychological makeup and okay. your mental makeup. And this is where also you have th the biggest positive effect when you apply by geometry. Mm -hmm. So th this is our main uh, thing that we want to do. We did it in Switzerland, in some areas of Switzerland, and we hope to start doing it in Canada. Uh, do we, can we take a couple of minutes for me to tell you my personal experience with biogeometry? Yes. Thank you, I'm, I'm uh, thrilled to be able to tell you personally actually. Uh, ten years ago, I was very seriously injured in a car accident. Multiple injuries, uh, you know, head injury, uh, musculoskeletal system, and uh, healing was just happening very, very slowly. Four years of traditional uh, Western style physiotherapy didn't do very much. And over the years, I seemed to develop more symptoms and they were worsening instead of getting better. Certain systems were getting, uh, symptoms were getting better, but others were being added to the mix. I couldn't think clearly at all. I had brain fog. I had what was called chronic fatigue, um, chemical sensitivities. Uh, my whole immune system was collapsing, really, and I tried everything and I didn't know what was wrong and whenever I uh, explained to my healthcare practitioners what was happening they just said that it was because my injuries had been so severe and it was a domino effect I didn't know what to do I couldn't work uh, all this time I haven't been working so two years ago I had the opportunity to leave my environment for three months and I spent the I spent it in the country visiting sacred sites actually, so, so not only was I out of Toronto, but I was also on sites uh, that carried a very special energy. And in those three months I became a completely different person. And I came back and I, I realized then that, it, you, well I came back uh, totally convinced that I was better and able to start work. And with two weeks of being within Toronto, again, I had like a collapse. And then I realized it was environmental. And I began working with something called radionics. I was tested on a Vega machine to be totally radioactive, which surprised me because I don't use a cell phone and I didn't even have a TV. And so I never thought that these things were affecting me. Uh, I then realized that I had to learn how to deal with this because how are we supposed to live in this world? that is permeated by electromagnetic radiation. So that's what led me to biogeometry initially, and uh, I'm so grateful for you to have invented that. Pier Paolo Alberghini uh, came over and uh, balanced my living environment because I was so weakened I couldn't even douse. And ever since that time, my, my health is just increasing in leaps and bounds, and so I'm just so grateful to you for having 
invented this, uh, this science. And also the way the courses are taught, that we are empowered to, uh, to learn to balance our own environments. And the fact that you encourage the learning of the principles and that we can apply our own creativity in taking them further as well. Uh, I think it's uh, nothing short of revolutionary and amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'd like to add something uh, that Tor just told me before coming in about this creativity in biogeometry. She did something that I really liked. <laughs> I had been teaching them uh, in Asheville last November on how to connect uh, earth energy centers or our buildings with sacred locations in the sky, how to find those sacred locations and how to connect the buildings to them. Now, I was te teaching it from uh, an architecture point of view mm -hmm. uh, or earth point of view, location and building. And what she did was really creative. She connected the centers of her body, the chakras. She actually connected them with sacred locations in the sky like we connect the ancient temples. So her body is permanently connected to those locations. She and did that to me too. I actually connected, yeah, yeah that, okay. was, that was my <laughs> creative. You know, I tell you something. I, I've been teaching by John to for, I don't know, maybe 40 years or something. <laughs> and every time I hear about something like this, for me, I mean, it's really fascinating the things you come up with, uh, those creative oh, ideas. Good. Yes. Oh, th that's the thing about the science. When you're learning it, you really feel yeah. like you can run with it. And it's the way that you've presented it uh, to the public, the way that it's being taught that uh, allow encourages us. So, yeah, and, and I could feel the shift, by the way. I could feel the shift, and yeah. it's still there, yeah. And then I connected Hugh's heart to a sacred uh, spot on the sky as well. And I felt the shift. I don't know if you did. Well, I felt the energy shift. You know, I, I, well, I think some people are more sensitive to this kind mm -hmm. of thing than mm -hmm. other people. Some people obviously more sensitive to EMF, well, radiation in, in general, than other people. Ladies are more sensitive than men <laughs> as a general rule. Right. Yeah. And I'm very insensitive. No, as a well, general well, rule. Well, well, no, I mean, as a general, I mean. Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> like, yes. No, no, maybe uh, if you found myself, <coughs> you would be uh, less sensitive th than a lady who practices the same thing. They're much, much more uh, right. sensitive. We could be much more uh, stronger emitters. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah. th the point you're making, too, is that we as a culture, as a society, with all yeah. the electromagnetic ma radiation, yeah. we are facing a time bomb. And more and more people are yeah. hitting, the, hitting the wall in terms of their Absolutely. ability to handle yeah. the amount of EMF mm -hmm. that's, that's around, yes. right? Absolutely. Um, and the symptoms are vague. See, in my case, I had all the symptoms, but they're so vague, you chalk them up to something else. Mm -hmm. You know, you think, well, I'm stressed out, or in my case, I had this injury, uh, but it's all around well, us. Because you're born into them. You're yeah. born in an electromagnetic environment, so you, you, you re it seems like normal that everybody has them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We have so many uh, questions. I, I just want to ask you a, a little bit, um, because, w uh, first of all, where did you, like, where did you get how did you invent this ibrahim or or did you were you drawing on uh, earlier uh, sources or where does it come from what's the origins oh. of bio okay, biogeometry to tell you something. there is the worldview is very similar to ancient egypt but you cannot go and learn energy secrets from ancient civilizations if you haven't discovered them today like when we uh, discovered how to make brain surgery today then we understood the reliefs that were showing surgeons doing brain surgery 5,000 years ago in Egypt. I see, okay. But if you didn't do it today, you'd never understand what they were doing. Right. So the same thing with what I did. Started from engineering, architecture, and all that. And I was teaching for so many years, teaching history of architecture to, to our students. I'm a professor of architecture. And we teach basically on sacred buildings, the evolution mm. of the styles of sacred buildings. But those sacred buildings are on sacred power spots. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to sacred power spots, you'll find in the same power spot, you dig under the building, mm -hmm. maybe 10 meters, there's another building from an earlier civilization, and then you dig more and more. And we have an area in Egypt in the temple of uh, Luxor. You find the ancient Egyptian temple, and then inside it, mm -hmm. a church, 
and inside it a mosque built mm -hmm. on the same power spot. Mm -hmm. So it comes uh, to, well, is the area more important or the building? Why are we teaching the building all the time? It must be something else. Mm -hmm. Then you start seeing at the dawn of humanity, they used to bring the 30, 40 ton stones mm -hmm. of granite. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, they used to drag them on sledges for maybe 200 miles and erect them on those power spots. So it came to me the idea, why don't we start looking at the energy mm -hmm. there and not the material? Mm -hmm. And then we understood that in those areas you had underground rivers mm -hmm. and earth currents crossing at certain angles. Mm -hmm. Certain angles would give you sacred power spots. Mm -hmm. Other angles would give you cancerous spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here, angles, are the components of shape mm -hmm. and that means they are right in my domain as an architect so I took it as my mission to develop a physics of quality that means a physics that studies the effect of everything on the human energy system mm -hmm. and from this physics of quality to develop a design language that would recreate the energy of sacred power spots through design so you you didn't have to go and build on a sacred power spot if you're building a home you could create one right where you are. That's a great segue, I think, to uh, ask Pier Paolo about your experience designing this house in Mississauga. And can you maybe tell the story uh, of, of how this house came to be built, how like you to. came to be involved? Yes. Um, first of all, um, I'm an architect from Florence from 44 years now. And um, I have always searched for finding a way of building buildings that will bless people. It's bless just people. Bless people yeah. so that they will enter into it and they will be transformed. Mm -hmm. And uh, having classical uh, upbringing and so on from Florence, uh, there was always the beauty that was um, inspiring me. But until I met Ibrahim eight years ago, I didn't know how to, to do what the, un the ancients do did. Mm -hmm. Once I started learning about him, taking all the courses, and then eventually this house came about. Um, the client asked me uh, to, to do this house, and um, the client actually, the, the owner, uh, was very sick. Mm. He had Parkinson. And I said, well, I have a solution for you if you come along and we hire as a consultant, Dr. Karim, we would have a house that will heal you eventually. And uh, his brief words were, I cannot not afford to carry him, to, to bring him on board. Mm -hmm. And there had started the adventure, let's say, of building this house. Um, there is a story that I would like to share with you which shows you and answers you. The first question you came in, can this change the river, the, the polluted river that passes right underneath the house? So um, there was a house on these two lots uh, built by an architect before. And when uh, Ibrahim came for the first time on the site, I had already done the plants, the floor plants of the house, and we placed them on a, um, on a horizontal um, floor there um, in the direction of how it would be built. Mm -hmm. And we started measuring. So we measure, um, mainly I was learning at that time, so we both measured um, the site and there was EMF coming from across the valley, pollution from the river, and um, um, we started talking about what can we do to change this pollution. So Ibrahim took a look at the plants and the plants, the, the house is mainly a U-shape with an entrance courtyard and you can see it there if you want. Uh, no, uh, uh, yeah. Pierre, why don't you just take that with you over there and, and yeah, hold it okay. up to the camera, wh right. what you want to show. Um, so, uh, this is the, the entrance court here. 
and um, the um, there was on on the side actually I can show what was the key here. This is just hold a it deck. up a little, little bit, a little higher if you could. Um, yeah. This yeah, is a deck. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, that is protruding from the house. That's the only part, and it has a beautiful view of the river and the valley. Yeah. And was sticking out of this U shape, and was the, the form was octagonal. So Ibrahim, take a look at the o the octagon, changes the line, maybe three feet long, in, a, in a one direction, and says, "Okay, measure it again." We measure, and everything changed. The frequency of this this space was good. The the river wasn't polluting anymore. We had no more smell. There was also something else. He said, um, are you noticing something different? I said, yes, there is a perfume in the air. Mm. There was a lilac tree right beside us. And all of a sudden, it started sending this perfume in mm. the air that was unreal. Mm -hmm. Wow. What's going on? So I said, okay, let's try this again. Erase, he did it in the pencil, erase that line, little line, and immediately the smell from the river came back, no more perfume from the tree, and um, EMF from across the site. So by this time, the landscape architect James Thompson comes along and I says, okay, let's try with him. So we put back the line and again the whole thing Stage. stayed again. See, that's amazing. It was the, the response of nature mm -hmm. because once you have traced and you have put it the, the plants, even if it's two-dimensional on a site, the site knows that this is going to be built and nature immediately responds to it. So this is how we have learned, and I have learned from Ibrahim, how to build according to earth. And from that point, the house grew from earth with all the shapes, proportions, and so on, so that now it affects five kilometer radius wow. of nature, EMF, the client, the owner of the house, has three other houses in Norway, in Florida, and in New York. And he used to go one month in each one of them along the year. Now he goes with his wife in these houses, leaves her there, and comes back <laughs> home after a week. He says, I'm going back to my home because <laughs> I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. That's briefly the story. There is more stories, but okay. this is no, there's condensed. One he took a picture. Oh, yes. Of the owner of the house. Yeah. She came in while we were testing with this line and the smell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we erased the line and he took a picture of her face. Mm -hmm. And then we put the line and he put a second picture of her face. And then within minutes apart, the next day he printed the two pictures and took the two pictures to her. And she told her, oh, Pierre Paolo, you can't trick me. You photoshopped that one. Oh. That's funny. Wow. You know, so we're talking about alchemy here. <laughs> well, you know, it, I'm almost wondering as if, you know, people who, um, well, uh, me for example, if I go into a restaurant, you know, I will only, I will feel better sitting in certain places. Yeah. Or if I walk into a room, I'm going to feel, you know, I can, how good do I feel in this room versus just walking into a different room, I'll feel a certain way. Is this really why we feel the differently in different rooms is it partly yes, course, related yes. to the shape yes, that those shapes. rooms Natural, of course, yes. have and is it related to the feng shui the feng shui uh, the, the chinese uh, yeah. well in a way you see the difference between uh, feng shui sacred geometry uh, or indian vasto and by geometry is that uh, the others are traditions ancient traditions and as ancient traditions they didn't have those man-made energies that we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Biogeometry is a new mm -hmm. physics of mm -hmm. quality mm -hmm. and in that way it can deal with waves, with microwaves, it, it deals with the actual physics <coughs> of those man-made energies yes. and uh, 
so it's uh, in a way it's totally different yeah. it's, it's more scientific in many ways it's and a support to all the others yeah. yes. and I love the way that it transmutes those harmful or those non beneficial energies it doesn't neutralize them or push them away it actually transmutes them it is a form of alchemy really yeah it puts a, a harmonizing quality on them so they carry that harmonizing quality in your body yes. uh, so whatever disturbance they bring is harmonized by the quality they carry yes. okay we don't have a lot of time i want to ask some more questions here Please do. <laughs> so speaking of <laughs> transmuting harmful energy yes. i'd like to ask you about um uh, you know we're hearing horror stories of course from the fukushima disaster that is yes. still putting radiation into all over the northern hemisphere is does biogeometry offer the hope of being able to transmute that kind of really harmful ionizing radiation? Yes, well, we don't transmute the radiation. We can actually put on it this <coughs> balancing quality. Mm -hmm. And while we were uh, uh, in Asheville last November, I showed them slides that we had done with radioactive materials. And they were done at the National Research Center in Egypt with mice. Mm -hmm. And we showed how. Uh, tissues of the mice in front of the radioactive materials were completely damaged and with some biogeometry solutions they fared completely like normal mice so we could offer 100% protection in uh, the materials we tested were uh, radioactive building materials mm -hmm. we didn't test it in Japan or something <coughs> like that but with radioactive building materials but today you know all around the world you have this depleted uranium, this secondary radioactivity and all that. That level we can definitely protect from. But if you stand in the middle of a, an atomic bomb, <laughs> that we can't help you there. Okay. <laughs> but so I would yeah. think, though, is there anything you can do for these uh, poor workers that are trying to work on the Fukushima plant? Definitely. Something that can help them or the people that even live nearby? Definitely we can do that. The, the thing is, our solutions and the results they make are so out of the ordinary that our biggest problem is not to actually provide the solution. Right. No, the, the biggest problem is to convince the people that we can give the solution. Sometimes even after we give the solution and people see the results, mm -hmm. the results are there, but people still are in disbelief, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's our, our main uh, uh, problem is how to bring the people to believe in a new science but every age that had a scientific revolution that had new sciences uh, you had the same problem mm -hmm. yeah i think somebody said once science progresses one funeral at a time yeah i hope it's not my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> okay well yeah. i mean i okay so uh, let me ask you then about, because you're talking about power spots yeah. earlier, and I've heard, I've, I'm just watching some uh, material about, of course, Egypt has the Great uh, pyramid. Pyramids, yeah. Uh, there are other pyramids in Central America, yes. in uh, Cambodia, um, all over the world. Yes. Now, are these power spots, what was the purpose of those pyramids to be built originally? Look, if you take uh, the history of humanity, a power spot was the sacred area around which a community gathered where they buried their dead, where there were special waters that had healing powers, and uh, where they did certain rituals. Uh, so it was something ingrained into the, the psychic makeup of humanity that they always related to a power spot. And those power spots had another thing they were like doorways, mm -hmm. doorways from our dimension to other dimensions. So you could have angelic manifestations, you could have oracles, you could have things like that. So humanity was really attached to those power spots. From the first humanity till today, this attachment was in two forms, either a man here, that means a huge stone, or what we call a dolmen, you have from those here in Canada wh where you have two huge stones and one horizontal one above them forming like a gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The strange thing is that they are all oriented to the range between east and southeast everywhere in the world. And that's uh, where they become most potent. Then on those 
they were put in the sacred power spots. Then ancient mounds were done on them. You found in Europe, especially in England, many of the mounds that you have there with castles on them or churches up there. Today they discovered that they were man-made. It was originally a dolmen, one of those dolmens, mm -hmm. and actually in the beginning maybe just earth on it. Later on, mud bricks and a whole hill was built on it. Later on, with civilization that started using proportion, mathematics, and all that, this mound became a pyramid, and the dolmen is still the chamber inside the pyramid. Mm -hmm. So it's humanity's way of dealing with uh, the power spots. But the strange thing is, it is the same way all around the world. Mm -hmm. Somehow, the, the men here, the dolmen, the mound, how it became a pyramid, mm -hmm. wherever you go, anywhere around the world, it's the same. And yet, it seems we have uh, collectively forgotten the, those origins. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yes. And that is the reason why we have so many uh, psychological disturbances today, because uh, of lack of this connection to the earth. Because sacred power spots are our connection to the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that you are talking about uh, addressing on, on citywide levels, yes. right? You're talking about doing it in Montreal, yes. perhaps doing it in Toronto as mm -hmm. well. Can you talk a little bit about what that involves and the kinds of effects that, that it will have? Well, in ancient times, anyhow, if you go to any of the ancient churches you have here, you'll find that the people already put them on power spots. But what we are going to do is find out where those power spots are and then start educating the people, bringing their awareness to those power spots so that mm -hmm. they can identify the history of the power spots, mm -hmm. uh, who were the people who lived around the power mm -hmm. spot, the rituals around those power spots. And then we can use now uh, biogeometrical shapes. In biogeometry, what we do, we take that energy that we have in power spots, but we amplify it about a million times for our use, like with electricity, you have it in a natural way very minute electricity but then you amplify it to use it so we amplify it and then make virtual connections mm -hmm. if we were building a new city we would make those connections actually in the planning of the city itself but since the city already exists so we can make virtual connections with geometrical shapes until we make a grid mm -hmm. a whole grid of spiritual energy covering all of the city and all the sacred power spots and then at a special moment, we start connecting some of those sacred power spots to certain locations in the sky, sacred locations up there. So we create a 3D grid. Mm -hmm. Once the 3D grid is in place, so, I mean, this grid will infuse every other energy aspect in the city with this energy quality. So it's as if the city is in constant prayer and in constant healing. Mm -hmm. It will really change everything. And to also protect the uh, inhabitants of any city from any other kind of uh, attacks that could be done with, uh, you know, the people are developing all kinds of modern weapons, trying to make uh, vibrational attacks and things like that. Such a grid will completely uh, protect the inhabitants of a city from any uh, mm -hmm anybody trying to harm them or anything like that. So this. it's even better than Star Wars. <laughs> it's, I, in a way it is. In a way it is because it's... It's that it, piece. It, it's yeah. No, because it's anchoring you, anchoring you spiritually to the mm. earth. Yeah. And this is a very important thing, the spiritual anchor. Ibrahim, is very important. Sorry. How long would such a project take to complete uh, if there were no uh, material obstacles or you know, if everybody was on was on side, uh, how long would such a no, technically? Yes, technically, it would take a very short time. Oh. But the idea about such a project mm -hmm. is to have as many people involved to bring the awareness, mm -hmm. to bring the uh, the stories about uh, all those sacred power sites, the rituals recorded with them. So it's an ongoing activity, actually. Yeah. So the physical solution might take, let's say, a couple of months mm -hmm. uh, to install, but the actual 
uh, education mm -hmm. of the whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, bringing it into the hearts of everybody, mm -hmm. this takes a longer time. But a very important point to understand here is that we are like a microcosm, you know, your mm -hmm. energy centers mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and the energy centers of the area where you were born mm -hmm. uh, in the region, they are in resonance. Mm -hmm. So it's like the, the little pattern that's mm -hmm. in connection with the big pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, if you neglect the big pattern, and if you allow the big pattern to have problems like mm -hmm. today, actually, the little pattern inside your mi the microcosm there gets disturbed mm -hmm. with all the problems that we're facing today. Mm -hmm. So by correcting the bigger pattern, you're also collecting the individual patterns mm -hmm. of every person living in the area. So it's a very, very important thing to, uh, to do. Mm -hmm. What kind of, uh, what would the world look like if, if it was done on a global, like worldwide? What, 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 how would that change our, our the world today? Well, everybody's speaking about the golden age. Mm -hmm. Now, you must understand, the golden age means that we know that in the constellations there will be in the sky there will be this balancing energy it is going to infuse the whole sky now if the golden age is up there it doesn't mean that it's going to come and knock at your door mm -hmm. you see you have to open your door you mm -hmm. have to invite it in mm -hmm. if you don't have let's say the gold in your heart the gold in the sky will not come down you have to make this resonance. So what we are doing with things like biogeometry here, we are empowering humanity in order to enter into resonance and to achieve this golden age in every aspect of our work. Now, what uh, will it do to humanity? I hope that we will reach a utopia or a golden age. I hope so, because it's either or. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you don't have much choice. Mm -hmm. Either we are intelligent enough to achieve that or bye-bye and some other civilization will come later on who are more intelligent and maybe they will do it. Mm -hmm. So, so it, there isn't much choice here. Mm -hmm. Pier Paolo, do you want to weigh in on that a little bit? Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're involved at a, uh, you know, at a very practical level designing yes. homes and other things. Well, has... Um, I, I have said before, this, is, um, this house has a five kilometers radius of influence. And um, one thing that uh, came to me when Ibrahim was speaking about the power spots is that actually with biogeometry, you can reconstruct a power spot because of the shapes, because of the attachments and everything that we can use so that we can protect from EMF we can also um, change geopathic stress, which is very important because there are certain magnetic grids which are carriers of very negative things because they are passing through, because what we have done to Earth. So with biogeometry, we can change with the power of numbers, those negative effects and... Um, <laughs> uh, no, does that mean... <laughs> I, I, you guys got some secret going on oh, here. Oh, that's the power of number. Oh, yeah, 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 she has it. She has it. It's not a tattoo. Yeah, Rose like, actually yeah. was uh, was leaping on one of these uh, bankers' grids <laughs> and uh, to change that. So all these um, parameters and um, way of building and uh, protecting humanity will form eventually this canvas that will elevate each one of us. When you mentioned geopathic stress there, yes. are, are you, is it possible then for using ge uh, biogeometry to uh, do things like ameliorate the potential of earthquakes to cause Absolutely. harm? Absolutely. Yes. That's what we were teaching the group <laughs> last November actually, and that's what Rose actually learned. Uh, we divided the earth into certain regions and we allocated uh, a region for every group and we taught them a method of detecting the disturbances and correcting them and then we gave them a set of symbols like this so that 
it becomes fairly easy. They detect the disturbance areas, and then on a Google map, they detect the disturbance areas. And then they visually throw in a set of symbols into those areas, mm -hmm. and they keep doing that until they manage to actually change that. And we did some training. We did that on areas that were nearby, and then we would go out and then test on the areas that were nearby. So we had quite some good training uh, on that. And then by the end of the week, we uh, looked at some of the areas that they had worked on, and we found that the rate of earthquakes had gone down, actually, when they were working. So can you use this using Google Maps and even uh, do something to help, say, Japan or the, ring, the Ring of Fire yes. areas? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We have done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are doing it. Actually, there is an organization that Ibrahim has founded in Asheville uh, with 75 of us, which have divided Earth in sections and groups of five, six, seven are working on each section to keep calm the earth mm -hmm. with some symbols which are called biosignatures invented by Ibrahim Karim. But it's a difficult thing. It's not an easy thing because when you do measurements in troublesome areas, sometimes you get hitbacks. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then, uh, so th there are, I mean, that's why we tell the group there are certain precautions uh, that we should uh, take. Usually when we, it's better, instead of just Google Maps, it's, it's better to go in the areas. Yeah. Like when we say, when we do in Toronto, we'll, we'll bury certain energy shapes or certain bijumped shapes in the ground in different areas mm -hmm. uh, in there. We have here, mm -hmm. for example, here, some of those shapes. There you go. Mm -hmm. So that's a... Uh, that's a shape that usually is buried in the ground. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get it right. You can't really see it, but uh, we'll... Uh, okay, the idea about... Uh, <coughs> it, it's a shape that big, you see. I, mm -hmm. It's that mm -hmm. big that gets buried in the mm -hmm. ground when you work in regional areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what we did here was we took pictures of those shapes and we sort of made three-dimensional engraving inside crystals and made them smaller. And then we have here a mini solution. What would say, and where can you use this mini solution? This mini solution is for a house or mm -hmm. for an area. You see, if you put this in a house, you have the house and its surrounding area already harmonized. So this is a mi mini individual solution. Mm -hmm. Right. Because and we've been talking a lot about large scale projects here, about entire, uh, you know, about houses or cities, yes. but there's so much the individual can do uh, with biogeometry. Yeah, I can't wait till you make Toronto when I'm electric exactly. sensitive today. Mm -hmm. yes. Give me a solution now. <coughs> and mm -hmm. so we devised those mini solutions. We took our big solution that put yeah. big areas, made them smaller, mm -hmm. put them into shapes like this so people can get the shape and put it in their home. And then uh, th they have a, a mini solution for their area. Okay, well, we, we're just about out of time here. but um, And I'm sure, as I do, I, I mean, I've still got a lot of questions. And yes, I believe you when you say, you know, maybe the hardest thing is convincing people about this yeah. because it, it seems so different from the kind of scientific thinking that we're used to. Yes. Um, but you're here in Toronto. You're here for the Total Health Show, I'm is that right? I'm here for the Total Health Show for a week now uh, until the uh, beginning of next week. So you're going to be, where is it, at the uh, Convention it's Center? M MTCC yes. Center. Yes. Okay. And uh, I'm speaking on, uh, on uh, Sunday and uh, Saturday. Monday. I'm speaking uh, Saturday at 1 o'clock, room okay. 205. And I'm speaking Sunday at 12 o'clock, same room 205 at the Convention Center. And then we also have there a booth uh, with Toronto Dowsers. Uh, we have a Bajomti booth because my first introduction, the people who invited me here uh, the first time in Toronto was a group uh, called the Toronto Dowsers here. So they invited me over. And uh, so Marilyn Genk, uh, who runs the Toronto Dowsers, she has a booth there. Uh, and our products, those mini solutions or individual solutions mm -hmm. on the books, mm -hmm. they can be found there 
at the Toronto Dow's by John Tristan. That's fabulous. So mm -hmm. people yeah. can uh, start to get biogeometry working in their lives uh, just by going to the Total yeah, Health Show. Yeah, and also yes. these kind of things like uh, medallions, medallions. medallions, things to wear, yeah. biosignatures, and so on. Okay, yeah. that's Do you fantastic. have any of the home kits? Uh, we have uh, them, yes. Home we, have, kits. we have home kits like that, I mm -hmm. mean cubes mm -hmm. like that uh, mm -hmm. that you use with attachments, a small attachment that you put on the electrical cables and one of the water pipes. Yes. It comes in a little box like this. Yes. So it's a little home kit. Yes. And then we have the medallions so that they're on your body all the time. And we have different solutions. We have something for the cell phones. For example, you see yes. here, this is my cell phone. It has something on it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this isn't your normal cell phone protection mm -hmm. because this has no quantitative effects whatsoever. All mm -hmm. it does it adds the, the energy of a sacred power spot to the object. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. Mm -hmm. And that's enough mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, when it does. Yes. It's amazing. So yes. people uh, who are curious can go down there and get more information. Are you going to be there as well, Pierre Paolo? Absolutely. Yes, we'll be there. <laughs> okay. I'll and never miss an opportunity. And I guess as an architect, if anybody out there is uh, thinking about building uh, a home or something, uh, we are able to serve. <laughs> we are, we <laughs> and, and, you, and employ uh, biogeometric uh, principles in, in the design, on, right? That has changed my life. Yeah. I would not build or design without biogeometry principles. Okay, fabulous. So, let's uh, now. What's do you have a website if people want to get in touch with you? www.alberghiniarchitect.com. Okay. A L B E R G H I N I. dot com. And, uh, and the biogeometry site, which is www.biogeometry.com. Biogeometry.com. Biogeometry.com. That simple. Yeah. Okay. That is simple, yeah. Yes. All right. Well, it's a real uh, pleasure having you here. Thanks, yeah. guys, yeah, for coming pleasure. in. Thank you and for giving us the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you so uh, much. And th yeah. yeah, thank you for your uh, for developing the science and for your generosity in sharing it as well. well. Thank you for for uh, hosting us and uh, th thank you for being part of our family of Bijamps. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's an I honor. I hope to hear new ideas from both of you every time I come. Yes. I mean, <laughs> this time you did the connection. I hope every time you yes. tell me something new because I really I like find that. it very inspiring. Yeah, yes. And uh, to be yeah. honest, when I was in school, my favorite subjects were math and physics. Yes. But then I also have aesthetic and artistic and spiritual ah. uh, orientations. And yeah. I always found that how can I combine them? Well, here's the answer. Yeah, you have it. Here's Perfect. the answer. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, thank you. Rose, that's it for a fabulous show. That was a fabulous show. Yeah. So and thanks for coming in yeah. and doing this uh, oh, today. Oh, my honor, my honor. Uh, okay. Nice to be back. Okay, so okay. we'll just uh, say then bye to everybody and uh, go down to the Soul Health Show this weekend and uh, get... Uh, Don't miss the opportunity because, really? uh, you know, Dr. Kareem isn't here every day. Absolutely. <laughs> and so uh, we are just gonna say bye-bye and uh, we'll be back tomorrow for more Liquid Lunch right here on thatchannel.com. See you then. Mm -hmm. So good to me So good, so good, so good to me She took me by the hand and showed me Not to take more than I need But that's the last thing that I remember The rest feels like a dream My hair was spinning, didn't know where I was or was I So good.